Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So for those of you who follow the channel, you'll know that every time I take a blood test, shortly after that, I use those results to, ad to do an online epigenetic age test. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what my epigenetic age is using the last set of blood test results. So the first site I quickly want to talk about is longevityadvantage.com. If you remember three months ago, um, I did send them a message and I did do the test and they didn't send me any results. And I did it two or three times and used two different um, email addresses and they just didn't send the results, which was a shame because I'd used them three or four times before that. They'd always been very accurate. They'd always had exactly the same data collected, which meant there were no fluctuations in the returns I was getting. Um, so never say never. I tried them again, um, hoping that they'd fixed whatever problem they had with sending out the results. And this is the result I got back. Not exactly what I'd expected. So chronological age, 57, which is right. Phenotypic age, infinity. That, that certainly doesn't sound right. Phenotypic versus chronological age, 1,000. So does that mean I'm 1,000 years old? Um, DNA methylation age is zero. So what's that? I was born the day that I did the test. And then DNA methylation versus chronological, minus 57. So again, zero. Um, not really the results I was expecting. Uh, I'd rather have not got the email back like I did last time. So I don't think I should be using Longevity Advantage again in the future. So after Longevity Advantage let me down for the second time, I went back to the site I used the last time they let me down, which was u.sharecare.com. Um, they're much more than just an epigenetic age calculator. They do ask you for three biological test results, and they'll want to know your blood pressure, your total cholesterol, and your HDL. And I'm hoping that in the future they will add other markers that are longevity related, such as your um, blood sugar levels, and maybe your C-reactive protein. But as for now, just these three. Um, they then ask you another 80 plus epigenetic age type questions or epigenetic um, marker type questions. Uh, and they're around the topics of stress, sleep, lifestyle, steps per day, fitness regime, your relationship status, um, smoking, medications, diet, alcohol, and some body measurements such as your height, your weight and your waist size. It then calculates your epigenetic age. So I took my last test with ushare.com in May 2021 when I was 57 years and three months with regard to calendar age. Um, their chronological age, or as they call it, real age, looked like this. They said I was 52 years and eight months. So they're saying I was four years and seven months younger than my calendar age. So jump forward three months and my latest set of stats where my real age was 57 years and six months, that's my calendar age, they, by their reckoning, my epigenetic age is now 52 years and nine months. So they're now saying four years and nine months younger than my calendar age. So in reality, I've aged as far as the calendar is concerned by three months, but my epigenetic age, according to this site, has gone back by two months. Now, of course, this is a very small snapshot, but as the months and the years roll by, I'm hoping this is going to prove, um, this data is going to prove very useful. Bear in mind, I've also got data from biologicalage.com. I do my epigenetic age test as and when I can get my saliva or blood out of the place I'm in at the moment. Uh, and I've also got the, um, the results from longevityadvantage.com. The, the, the main um, gist of all of those is that I'm between four and five years younger than my calendar age. Um, so I think that by getting data from more than one site using more than diff more than one set of um, metrics or data collection points, I think I'm going to get a more rounded score. So at the moment, looking at all the things I've done since I've started this, I reckon I'm between four and five years younger um, than my calendar age. So the last site I use is this one, biologicalage.com. And I used to use this because they only used to ask questions and it was for someone to use who probably didn't have access to medical data. That said, they now ask for your blood pressure and your total cholesterol score. So um, 
I'm going to look for another site where people who don't have access to those kind of um, statistics can go through a biological age test. Or if someone knows of such a site where you just get asked questions, please send me the link um, so that in future we can we can add that to the list. I'll continue to use biologicalage.com because, as you'll see in a minute, they are getting better and they're narrowing down the margin of error, uh, and it all adds to the data that I'm collecting. Um, so this site's now been updated. They ask 24 questions, far more than when I started. I think when I started, it was like eight or 10 questions, all about different lifestyle factors, height, weight, um, diet, visits to the doctor, visits to the dentist, um, fitness regimes, etc. Not as many as youshare.com, but they are getting there. So the last time I did this test, they said I was 48, which was good. Um, this time it says I'm 50. And now I reckon that's because they now ask more questions, so their margin of error is getting smaller. Um, and they also ask now for two medical markers. And this got me to thinking about epigenetic DNA methylation test markers that you have to pay for. Um, if you look at a company like Chronomics, who are fairly expensive and who measure against 20 million markers, their margin of error is going to be very small and you'll get an accurate representation of your epigenetic age. Compare that to companies like TrueMe Labs and EpiAge.com, who only measure against between 15 and 20 markers, their margin of error is going to be much larger, so within 5 or 10 years. So your real age, your calendar age could be 50, and they could be telling you you're 40, which is great, you think that's, that's what it is, or they could tell you that you're 60, which in some cases could be um, quite alarming. So just be aware that if you're paying for a DNA methylation test, do your research, Find out the company that, that measures against either thousands or hundreds of thousands of markers or millions as opposed to those that are in double digits because you may well just be throwing your money away. Um, so this company, not as accurate as youshare.com, but they are getting more accurate and I will continue to use them because uh, it's all data that will we'll mount up as the years go on. You can see at the end they give some very generic um, statements which again if you're just entering your longevity journey these are good markers if you don't know or good pointers if you don't know what you're doing comments like being slightly overweight will decrease your life expectancy that's that's a well-known fact breakfast is the most important meal of the day mm, it is but they're kind of I think they're leaning to when you wake up in the morning you have breakfast before you go to work um, they're not taking into account the intermittent fasting um, benefits um, so my breakfast is important, but I don't eat my breakfast until noon. Um, eating at least five servings of fruit and vegetables a day, I'm not sure that um, that is an accurate statement because those pe some people see that as being four servings of, veg of fruit and not vegetables, and we know that there's a lot of um, sugar in fruit. So I think this one's been debunked a couple of times, but it's, it's a good thing if you're not doing it to eat more fruit and vegetables. Highly refined and deep fat foods are sometimes a treat and not always. I think that's a very good statement. Um, that said, the cooking of your own food at home, if you're cooking good quality food, but you're covering it in vegetable oil, then obviously that's not a particularly good way to cook it. So hopefully these kind of statements will spur people on to more investigation to realize that vegetable oil, sunflower oil, canola oil is bad for them and they should be looking more towards um, olive oils for cooking. So that's it for biologicalage.com. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, if you have had a blood test done recently and it did capture your blood pressure, your total cholesterol and your HDL, then why not give uh, youshare.com a go? And if it did capture those particular results, then use two of them for biologicalage.com. What have you got to lose? Um, good that this site is improving by asking more questions and asking for medical markers. But unfortunately now, because it does ask for medical markers, um, someone who doesn't have access to that can't really use it. So I will look for a site that does only ask questions. And please, if you do know of such a site, send me the URL so I can add it to the next test. What have you got to lose? Um, some of the questions on here aren't as specific or as um, pointed as they could be. So always err on the side of overdoing it, if you like. For example, when they ask you about how many alcoholic drinks you have, if it says, do you have one a day, and you don't, like me, maybe you have two or three a week, and the option is one a day, two a day, four a day, then don't select zero a day. I would select one or two a day. Um, this hopefully will drive your epigenetic age up and maybe spur you into doing something about it. 
Uh, also, I think one of the sites asks you about your body weight. Is it average? Is it slightly overweight? Are you quite fat or are you obese? And if you're somewhere between choosing slightly overweight and fat, then go with fat because that will, again, will push your um, epigenetic age up and may spur you into doing something about bringing it down. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.